All right, I'll get us started. So hi everyone, welcome to the Argo CD and Argo Rollouts community meeting. Uh, my name is Danny Thompson and I am a software engineer at Intuit. I mostly work on Argo rollouts, but I've worked on Argo CD in the past. And today on the schedule, we have a lot of different topics. So just to kind of give you a brief overview, I'm going to give a brief intro, but I'm going to keep it short. Uh, Alex is going to talk about the uh, 1.5.3 notable features. Uh, we're going to have a demo about Argo Rollout's anti-affinity with uh, Karina. And then we have um, a bunch of di discussion topics. And so since we are um, kind of have a lot, a lot to discuss, I'll just um, just kind of dive into it, but um, just as some background, uh, we're having this meeting as a forum for our users to uh, kind of get, provide any feedback they have on any of the projects or provide a form for them to ask any questions they have. And in case you don't know uh, what Argo CD and Argo rollouts are, they are both Kubernetes native projects. Argo CD focuses on providing uh, GitOps continuous uh, delivery to Kubernetes. And Argo Rollouts is a progressive delivery tool that really started focusing on blue green and canary deployments and now is evolving more into progressive delivery. And so uh, with that, Please feel free to add your name to the list of attendees. And uh, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to post it in the Slack. So to start, uh, I'm gonna hand it off to Alex and he's gonna present the new changes in 1.5.3 of Argo CD. Okay. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, can you please confirm you can hear me? Cool. Thank you. So uh, my name is Alex and I'm a software engineer at Intuit. I work full time on Argo CD. And today I'm going to talk about uh, briefly, you know, features which we introduced in 1.5.3 release. So let me start sharing my screen. And okay. I hope you can see my screen. Can I get, can I get the information please? Yep, we can see it. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about three minor features. I would not call them features, it's enhancements. And I want to start from uh, a set of tools which we introduced to help uh, customize our CD uh, configurations. So we've got a lot of, I would say, complaints and uh, questions about how to make our CD configuration right. And we try to identify what is the biggest challenge and it feels like it's really difficult to make changes in Argo CD configuration because uh, there was no way to make these changes without modifying settings of a running Argo CD instance. And uh, basically, Argo CD is uh, meant to be used by multiple developers at the same time. And we obviously we do not want to uh, make the changes in a live Argo CD instance break it. And, you know, it's even if it takes like several minutes, we don't want to have a downtime for several minutes. And uh, to make it easier to, to address the problem, we've introduced a set of CLI tools as a start to validate these changes, uh, like configuration changes kind of on your local file instead of applying them to live Argo CD instance. And so these CLI tools, uh, which I'm trying to describe, are available as part of uh, Argo CD util binary, which is bundled into Argo CD image. And let's, let's just try, uh, jump straight into the demo to make it easier uh, to understand what I'm talking about. So here is uh, Argo CD configuration, which I'm going to apply to uh, Argo CD, obviously. And, uh, I want to use 
Uh, first of all, I want to know uh, if the configuration is valid at all uh, or not. And here is how you can use it using uh, Argo CD util binary. So the binary is uh, available in Argo CD uh, image. And the simplest way to use it is to just use a docker run command with the volume mountain. So the command which I'm going to run, it, uh, it's going to run a, a docker container using latest Argo CD uh, image. And it is going to issue the following command. It's going to run a Argo CD settings validate command. And I'm going to use this uh, Argo CD CMP flag to point the binary to the local file uh, which contains a uh, config map. So let me run it very quick. And as you can see, this binary basically validates the settings and it will uh, show the errors if there are any errors. And if settings are valid, it just gives a brief overview of all the settings applied in the config map. So as you can see here, uh, everything is valid. And the last line shows that we have few resources that are configured in this config map. And the reason I'm pointing out here, the resource rights is, it seems to be the most complex part of our CD configuration, uh, which poses the most of questions in our support channel. So here's my config map. I'm going to make it a little bigger. And it, it really has a resource customization, uh, which overrides how our CD uh, div the deployment resource, how it assess the deployment health, and it describes, it can configure a few actions for the deployment. And I'm going to talk more about actions a little bit later. So let's start from different customization. Uh, as you might know, different customization is required uh, to kind of uh, exclude some fields of a resource from different. It's often needed because Kubernetes, it's, it makes sense to leave out some fields out of the different uh, because these fields might be controlled in our in our time by some controller. Uh, replicas is a typical example. So if you have HPA, you don't really want to control replicas. And then if you use a uh, Helm chart, which you don't control, which has replicas in the, in the Helm chart, then you might use different customization to remove replicas from different. And as a result of it, Argo CD is going to just ignore the field completely, and your application won't be out of sync if the replicas field is uh, deviated from the expected field. So, okay, that configuration is not trivial, and Often it's hard to kind of come up with a right JSON type. So Argo CD Util now provides a command to uh, run the diffing and print the list of fields which are going to be excluded from the diffing. Let me demonstrate it. Okay. So I'm going to run the command. Uh, Argo CD Util settings ignore differences and it takes a couple of parameters. One is deployment YAML file, which just has a sample deployment. And the same parameter which I used before, the path to local application deployment uh, And let me demonstrate with deployment before I run the command. So this is my deployment. It's just regular deployment, which has spec and it has replicas in it. So if I am it's going to basically use the same logic as Argo CD and it will uh, it's going to print me a list of fields which are now excluded from this. And the benefit here is that now you don't have to modify Argo CD settings to see you know how these settings you know, affected the live uh, diffing. Instead you can just Keep making changes in your local file and see how, how it affects the thing. So for example, I can just say, I want to go ignore the whole step. Just save the file and you run the same command. 
and it is now going to show me that false spec is ignored. Um, so hopefully that will make your life a little easier. And next we have second kind of uh, problematic field, which is a health law script. That law script is supposed to customize the way Argo CD assess the health of resource. Uh, so it's not easy to get the health law script right from the first time. And uh, again, you can use Argo CD YouTube binary to quickly execute the health script. And here's how you can do it. Uh, so very similar command. Uh, same set of parameters, and now instead of ignoring differences, you can use a fail uh, subcommand, and it is going to simply execute the raw script and then print this result on the screen. And again, you can just go ahead and make a quick change in the tool. Let's make a change and now change status to progressing. Execute the uh, binary one more time, and as you can see, status immediately changed. So it gives you much quicker uh, cycle where you can make changes and immediately see results. And finally, the last one. Um, so as you might know, Argo CD has concept of resource actions, which is again, it's a raw script, which has a name and it can make small changes on resource. A typical example is uh, deployment has action restart. And that restart simply introduce an annotation on the port template stack. Uh, and to validate your custom action, again, you can use RBCD to settings binary. Pretty much the same uh, semantics of this command, except uh, instead of help, we are going to, we're supposed to provide, uh, we're supposed to use uh, command action, and we have one more additional parameter, the action name. So, and the result of this command is uh, a difference introduced by the action. So pretty much what we're seeing here, if you run an action restart against deployment, it is going to introduce an annotation with the current time with the value. Um, Okay, for the sake of time, I will move on. So please give it a try to these uh, settings and please give us feedback. So pretty much uh, this set of CLI commands was implemented based on our experience. We maybe have other challenges and now we have a, kind of, we have a set of, we have a room to introduce more commands and simplify your use cases. Mm. Okay, uh, the next feature I want to uh, talk about is uh, related to customize. That was another thing which we wanted to implement a long time ago. And uh, so customize keep evolving and uh, team keep publishing versions very frequently. And it's really hard to us to kind of, uh, upgrade, customize, uh, you know, catch up with the changes. So uh, every release we pretty much we trying to upgrade customize, but what we realized is sometimes our users don't really want it because customize itself might introduce some changes. And if, in case you have a lot of users, these users might prefer to stay on older customized version. Some other users might want to get upgrade sooner. So pretty much the request is, can we have two customized versions at the same time. And we pretty much implemented this ability in 1.5.3 release. Um, so let me demonstrate how it works. Here's uh, Argo CD uh, instance, which uses um, customize. Yeah. So I have an application uh, which is based on customize. And let's say I want to switch that application to a different customized version. To do that, uh, first of all, you, can, you need to make sure to add a binary of a different customized version into uh, the image 
which Argo CD is, is using. And this is, that was available even before. So we suggest to just use init container, which downloads a binary and save it somewhere uh, in the container. But what was missing is the ability to save Argo CD to use the binary. So to do that, we just need to make a couple steps. First of all, we need to register the binary uh, in Argo CD config map. And that's really easy. To, to register a binary, I just need to add a field in Argo CD config map, which looks like customized version, uh, then the free text version number. I'm going to use imaginary 3.4.5 version, and then the path to a to config map. And the path to a binary which corresponds to this version. Um, and then, as soon as I say these changes, Argo CD is aware of an additional uh, uh, customized version. And now you can use Argo CD UI to switch your application to that version. To do that, you just need to navigate to application details page, uh, click on app details, move to parameters tab. And here you can use edit button to switch into edit mode. And the first field version has a drop down where you can choose a different customized version. And same is available if you manage your application declaratively. So you can just modify your application manifest and specify the version in the source, uh, or you can use CLI for the same. And I do not want to actually make this change right now because that application happens to be Argo CD itself. So if I make a mistake, it will break the CD. Um, okay, and I had one more feature to demo. I'm going to be really quick to demonstrate it. So the feature addresses one more kind of pain point, which a lot of people requested. Uh, so this is an ability to run Argo CD UI. Uh, on a different path, uh, on a path different from root. So, and the use case it addresses is Imagine if you have a single host name and you want to run multiple Argo CD instances on it. And in this case, you can use different ports to access Argo CD UI, but it's obviously not the best experience because user, it's not common to ask user to memorize ports. Instead, you can just use uh, different presses. Um, for example, you might say, uh, uh, my company ci.com slash Argo CD1 slash Argo CD2 and so on. So different press for each Argo CD instance. And now this is possible with the new release. So to enable this feature, you just need to change a single, you need to introduce a single flag in Argo CD deployment. Let me show it to you quick. So this is Argo CD server deployment and it has the same standard set of flags instead of I mean, this additional one, uh, a root path flag. And the value is that basically your, your path which you want to use. So in this case, I want to use Argo CD uh, as, a, as a root path. So, and as soon as this flag is added, uh, you can now access uh, your Argo CD using that path. So my deployment is running in Minikube. I just use Minikube command to open the Argo CD UI. It is showing me 404 right now as expected because I'm still using the root path. But if I switch to Argo CD, uh, everything just works. So, and we also did a bunch of changes in pretty much all uh, UI flows. So we'll make sure that uh, SSO login works, uh, non SSO login works. You can still use CLI uh, using the new CLI flag. So 
uh, we introduced a new flag on the kind of root level of every Argo CD CLA command, which is Argo CD web root path. And, yeah, so gRPC web root path. So if you want to talk, use Argo CD CLA and run a command against instance, which is uh, using non root path, you need to uh, specify the path in gRPC web root path flag. So in this case, it's supposed to be uh, under CD. Um, okay, that's it. I used a little bit more time than I expected, but okay, these are, this is, these are all the features of 1.5.3. Please um, try them and give us your feedback. And with that, I want to move it back to Daniel. <clears throat> Great demo, Alex. Um, Thank you. I'll just give it maybe a minute or two just for any questions that anyone had. Um, but we won't spend too much time since I know we have a lot of other content. Um, I do see one question in the Slack channel. I'll just kind of reread it. The official customized charts deploy the Argo CD config map, forcing us to use uh, patches strategic map merge to override it. Why not have Argo CD look for a config map with a different name and use that as an override? Alternatively, is there any interest in breaking out the customized manifest so that there are ones without the Argo CD dash CM config map? And I will post that into the Chad, just in case you want to read it again. I have problems with my slide. Can you post the whole question, please? So the main question is, and maybe I missed when you were, maybe you showed your customized file. And mm -hmm. I missed it, but at least Personally, this is Aton, by the way. Um, you know, I have when I deploy Argo CD with customize, I need to do a patches strategic merge to override the Argo CD CM file. Mm -hmm. So it's cool that we're adding this new functionality to the Argo CD config map. Um, let's just call it the config map. But it would be interesting if we could use this new feature in a separate config map to do these overrides. Oh. and use this functionality. Actually, while working on some other feature, I was tempted to introduce a feature to uh, just let users spread all the settings across multiple config maps. And Argo CD would pick up all these settings as long as each config map is annotated with, uh, sorry, not annotated, has a special label. So I, I really like that idea. I feel like with should discuss it, but it's just, it was not a top level priority. But I, I can see the value in it. And I feel like technically it's kind of easy to implement. Um, and I, I could not find any downsides. So just to yeah. surprise, idea is to just uh, change your PCD in a way so it would look for all config maps with a special label. And then just merge these config maps into a single kind of in memory representation of settings. Yeah, it's a it's a little bit tangential to what you just demoed, but it definitely becomes more as of, of an issue as people want to use what you just demoed, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I I agree that and that it that thing was not implemented because no one else asked for it. It was just my idea, but now I see like at least like two people want it. I I would create a bug for it. And the ticket can collect more thumbs ups, and then we can someone else can pick it. Like someone can pick it up and work on it. The the other alternative, and I think most of us know enough YAML to do this, is just create a separate customize to not include the config map. So say it again, please. Uh, uh, I guess another alternative to really start leveraging what you were demoing is mm -hmm. to just use a create a new customize file that ditches the config map. In other words, doesn't have it included. I don't 
think I understood it. So uh, which feature are you talking about? Are you talking about uh, just the ability to spread kind of all the settings across different config modes? That seems to add complexity. Mm -hmm. um, whereas just maybe modifying, customize, or having customized files that just don't include that maybe is a better way to go. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I think for the sake of time, yeah. we should probably move on. And I would encourage you guys to continue having this conversation over Slack. Mm -hmm. um, with that, I'll hand it off to Karina, who's going to present Argo Rollout's new anti-affinity feature. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yep. OK. Um, yeah, hi, everyone. My name is Karina. Uh, I work at Intuit, and I recently joined the Argo Rollouts team. So today I'll be discussing the anti-affinity feature I created for Argo Rollouts. Uh, let me just share my screen. Uh, Everyone Karina, see this? Before you start, uh, in the yeah. uh, in the doc, can you uh, can can you guys also write whether you are using Argo Rollouts or evaluating Argo Rollouts in the meeting uh, out of the thirty people? I'm not too sure how many are using Argo Rollouts. You can start going. Okay. okay, can everyone see my screen? Yep. Okay, so um, just some background information on this. Um, some of our users notice pods restarting for seemingly no reason after blue-green deployment. Um, and that issue can be avoided with this anti-affinity feature. Um, so before I go into details, uh, let me just go over an example to illustrate the issue. Um, so here's a rollout that has eight pods. Um, it's uh, distributed across two nodes. Um, in this example, each node can hold six pods. Um, so the user makes a change to the rollout um, that creates and deploys a new version. So as you can see here, there's a blue version that was deployed. Um, so uh, the cluster brings up another node to accommodate all 16 pods. Um, so once the rollout finishes progressing, um, the old version, which is the green version, is scaled down. So then um, in that case, uh, remember that every single node can hold six pods. So um, in this case, the cluster is over-provisioned. And once the cluster autoscaler um, detects that, then um, it will scale down one of these nodes and reschedule its pods. Um, so as you can see in this graphic, um, two of the pods have been rescheduled um, and the namespace is now down to two nodes. Um, so this example just kind of uh, explains why random pod restarts may happen after blue-green deployment. Um, and this causes problems not only because it can confuse the user, but it can also cause production issues. Um, pods restarting are unexpected behavior and it's not ideal and not all applications um, are built to handle shutdowns gracefully. Um, and also some applications take a long time to start back up. Uh, we notice that this happens more often if instance groups are used. So um, instance groups are isolated kind of collections of nodes um, and usually they're set aside to run a specific service. So that service will only run on nodes in the instance group. So um, in that case, there's just a smaller pool of nodes um, to schedule services on. So then there's a greater chance that um, nodes will need to be brought up and then um, subsequently scaled down um, after blue-green deployment. So then um, this issue um, where pods are rescheduled may happen more often. Um, so this situation can be avoided with anti-affinity for anyone who doesn't know. Um, Kubernetes has um, a feature called pod anti-affinity. So um, that controls how pods are scheduled onto nodes. Um, and anti-affinity prevents certain types of pods from being scheduled together on the same nodes. Um, so if anti-affinity had been enabled um, for that example, um, this is how the pods would have been scheduled instead. Um, so the cluster would have needed to bring up two extra nodes um, instead of just one to accommodate the blue version. Um, but this way, when the green version is scaled down and then blue-green completes, then it would not have affected any of the pods um, from the blue version. Um, 
So here's how to enable anti-affinity. Um, it works with both blue-green and canary deployments. What you have to do is you have to add an anti-affinity uh, flag underneath strategy, and you can choose between a hard requirement where anti-affinity must be honored, or you can choose a soft requirement, which is basically just a best effort. Um, and basically uh, what anti-affinity will do is it just uh, injects an anti-affinity stanza into the replica set. So the controller will do that. Um, and I'll showcase this in a, de in a demo, which I'll do in a minute. Um, so the main trade-off of enabling anti-affinity is just that deployments can take longer. Um, Kubernetes, if anti-affinity is enabled, Kubernetes may have to scale up more nodes to respect anti-affinity rules. And this is more relevant for instance groups, uh, just because they happen to have a smaller pool of nodes. Uh, so I have a brief demo to show you how to enable anti-affinity. Um, so over here, I just have kind of a dummy namespace I created. Um, I already have a rollout running here with two pods. Um, I ha just have an instance group that I created also. It has a minimum of two nodes and a maximum of four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to deploy a new version of the rollout. Um, I'm going to add in an anti-affinity field and I'm going to make it a hard requirement. So what this should do, um, because I've enabled anti-affinity, this should inject uh, an anti-affinity stanza into the replica set. Um, and I also just changed an environment variable to make sure this is registered as a new version. So let me show you the pods right now. This is just for the existing rollout. So this is, these are the two pods for the existing rollout and you can see they're on two different nodes right now. So let me apply the new version that I just showed you. Okay, so right now the new pods are pending because the cluster autoscaler is bringing up a new node to accommodate these. So let me show you um, this exact same uh, new replica set I created on a different namespace. And you can see that um, the new version's pods are on a different node than the old version. Um, so let me just show you the manifest for the new replica set I created. Um, and you can see in the spec, there is an anti-affinity stanza for pod anti-affinity. Um, and basically what this has is um, pod anti-affinity took in a value and this value is the hash value for the previous replica set. And what this does is it just prevents um, pods from the old version from being on the same node as pods from the new version. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I think there were a couple questions. Oh, the charts really help. Okay, I'm glad. Um, Okay, yeah, that's it for me if nobody else has any questions. Uh, thank you. Yeah, great job, Karina. That's a great demo. Um, with that, unless if anyone has any other questions, we can move on to the application set proposal with uh, Jesse. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Amy. Uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Um, okay, so just some background. Um, the basically, you may or may not be aware of the pattern that um, we've been suggesting for um, the past year or so about called app of apps, um, and it's basically that was trying to serve the uh, use case where people want to manage their applications. Uh, declaratively instead of imperatively, like through the Argo CLI or through the API. Um, so th that's what we recommended to people um, um, when they wanted to do uh, it declaratively. Uh, but over time, uh, it's kind of exposed a lot of usability problems. Um, 
and and just um, bugs and all kinds of things that like we're not really happy with. Like I, I've never been really happy with that that pattern. Um, so we're not going to have time to go through in detail about this spec, but I'll just kind of give a, a high level. Um, so Devin uh, from Red Hat actually filed this issue, um, and it's uh, this proposal is uh, partially inspired by this idea of, of, of a generator of applications. Um, and so we've been working with Devin from um, offline. He's seen this proposal. Uh, we've presented this um, internally, and then this is uh, what we've uh, come up with. Um, so the idea is that um, we want to introduce a, um, a new CRD um, called an application set. And the way you should think about the application set is, is simply a generator of applications. Um, and so uh, the way you generate applications, it can come from a variety of different sources. Uh, it can come from just a explicit list of uh, values that you you supply. It could come from a configuration files discovered in Git, um, or it can come from uh, the list of clusters that Argo C that are that are registered uh, to Argo C D. Um, and, um, and essentially this is like a very basic application set. There's really two main stances, a, a generator section uh, and a template section. Um, and so generators are the is the producer of, of the items of the list that you want to pass to the template, uh, which you can think about as a, it basically an incomplete uh, application spec. Um, and you know that, notice that there's these uh, variables kind of sprinkled in um, inside the template, and then these would be substituted by uh, the items in the generator. Uh, so there's a couple of generators that we would initially start out with. Um, the easiest one is just a list generator, which is just a literal list of um, items. Um, so if I wanted to deploy this guestbook app across three clusters, um, I would just supply a, a list of three items with the different parameters. Um, and these would um, get substituted here. Actually, this is wrong because name is not a um, variable. It would be cluster. Uh, and so the, the three applications that would be generated would be named three different ways, engineering dev dash guestbook, engineering dash prod dash guestbook, and finance pre prod dash guestbook. Um, and I happen in, to have in my configuration this git repo three different folders. Uh, containing different, um, maybe, maybe they're customized overlays um, uh, that they need to point to because my guess, I'm using customize to, to customize my guestbook. And then the server is also something that was parameterized above. And so we would deploy this into three different clusters. Um, we have uh, the next generator that we um, are thinking about is when I have Argo CD and I'm managing uh, lots of clusters. I just want to um, deploy an application across the whole fleet of uh, clusters. And so the cluster generator would allow you to um, do that. Current, um, right now, like all you have to do is specify a the cluster stanza in the generator. Um, and on a, out of the box, you would be provided a couple of default variables, the name of the, um, the cluster in Argo CD server is its uh, API server address. And then you also have access to any labeling and um, annotations that you've done against the cluster. Um, granted, we currently don't um, expose a mechanism to label a cluster, which, um, which has an internal representation in Argo CD as a, as a Kubernetes secret, uh, but we would enhance Argo CD to supply um, or to be able to label uh, the uh, clusters. Um, and, then, um, and then for those who want to GitOps their configuration, um, we provide a set of uh, Git generators. 
Um, and the, actually the examples are better if you look, if you follow this link, because I, um, uh, I put some file system and directory layout examples of what, what this would help with. So let's say, um, let's say my Git repo was structured like this. I have um, my guest book and I have maybe two versions of my guest book. Um, and then I have this, this huge JSON list of just cluster configurations and they could be in um, arbitrary format. So this, this is my business logic format. I, I have clusters nested in some field and then, but it, what's important is I have like some fields that I want to access uh, as part of my generator. Um, and so um, what would happen here is that all of these fields would be uh, made available as variables that you can access in your um, uh, template. And so if I wanted to uh, access like the server address, I can actually say uh, uh, cluster that server. Actually, I'm not using it here, but let's say I want to access the cluster that uh, name. I can use dot notation uh, to access the cluster name. Um, this, this is an example of a Git generator that is using a, um, is singling out a specific file that it wants to use um, as a item list. Um, on the other hand, if you, you might have a directory structure more like this. Um, and so I have, I, for, I, I spread across uh, in my Git cluster configuration and individual file files. Um, and in this case, I actually want to discover uh, these files um, and to use as items in my generator. And so if you see the syntax, it's actually the same syntax, um, but it's using um, the Git uh, discovery syntax to kind of discover um, all config.json files. And and what will happen is that it, this generator would produce four applications. Um, and every config.json is actually just a um, uh, JSON structure. And each one of these things would be an item uh, produced by the generator. So this uh, app set would produce four applications. Um, and then here I am accessing the um, cluster address here and the, the cluster.name. Um, so this this is the um, the Git file generator that is is doing discovery. Um, then the other um, use case that um, uh, that we've been poor at is more of a what we call the mono repo. And uh, a mono repo is is a pattern where people take a Git uh, a Git repository and they capture the entire state of a cluster in that Git repository. Um, and there's generally like a one-to-one -one associated with a Git repository, or at least a directory in the Git repository to a cluster. Um, and so the, the use case is that anything I put inside that Git repository, I want to just automatically get deployed into um, the cluster. Actually, I kind of I kind of show this these here. So, so um, I forgot to mention, show this earlier, but this is the use case where I wanted, I want a single app deployed to like many clusters. The one I'm currently talking about is I have a single Git repository, a single cluster, and then all of uh, my apps are in that Git repository and developer teams send pull requests to that Git repository in order for those apps to get in the cluster. Um, this is the, this is actually the primary mode that Flux operates in, um, if you want to give like, a, have some reference. And so um, our goal is to kind of support this model, uh, but still preserve that application experience, like having an individual application for things that get dropped into that Git repository. Um, and so if you look at this, I have an add-ons uh, folder and everything inside here is just like a, a set of um, manifests. Maybe some are Helm charts, maybe one is a customized directory, one is just raw YAML. Um, so what's going on here is that I, um, this would use the directory paths as um, uh, to discover 
um, as items to the generator. And here, if I were to add one more add-on here, this would produce a fifth item. And what we would make as uh, default variables are things like the path or the path base name, uh, you know, maybe the path directory name, um, and then so that those could be used as, um, say, your application name. Um, okay, so the those are generators. We're thinking there could be more type of generators in the future, including ones uh, maybe custom generators. Maybe it's like a shell script or something that um, someone would invoke um, in their Git repo. Um, but Coupling um, generators are filters. And so oftentimes what is generated, you just want a subset of it. So maybe that config file is like, is like all clusters in, in your company, but you only want to um, apply, uh, deploy apps on a subset of them. And so um, for every generator, you can specify uh, filters. Uh, the first filter that we would support is an expression-based filter. Uh, and uh, this, this library we've used successfully in uh, already in uh, Argo rollouts and, and workflows. Um, and essentially, we, you can run an expression uh, to, uh, that would be evaluated on every item of the generator. Um, and it would filter that item list into things that you would only want to um, uh, uh, deploy or apply your um, or generate an application for. Um, okay, so um, some other information. If you if the template is not um, let's say you you is not applicable for the, all your generators, you the template field can be repeated inside a generator um, if you wish. For example, this is kind of showing, well, some of my, for all Helm charts, uh, I want to use some Helm specific parameters, but, and then for customize, I, um, I, I don't. This template is a way to, templates inside generators are a way to kind of um, uh, override, I guess, the default template. Um, and, um, so just some notes about some details about how uh, applications would work. So we are um, expecting users to actually formulate names from the parameters. Um, the reason why um, we need to do this is that um, uh, app, unlike things like replica sets, which does formulate names of the like deployments will formulate the names of the replica sets. Um, uh, we require that application names be um, consistent and, and they remain the same uh, despite any changes that you might make to the spec or to um, the contents of your config. Um, so we actually have a, a opposite require of replica sets, which actually, uh, or sorry, deployments, which formulate replica sets based on like the hash of the pod template because um, Replica sets uh, are, are intended to be ephemeral, whereas applications need to uh, preserve the same name. Otherwise, if we just renamed applications, it's essentially treated as a delete. Um, so that's a note about application naming. Um, the there will probably be need to have a, a similar sync policy in an application set. Um, Simply because people might not want to prune automatically. If I if I mess up my application set config, I don't want all of a sudden my uh, applications to get deleted automatically. Um, so it'll, uh, it'll likely have a uh, opt in on pruning. Um, and then the other complaint that we've had with App of Apps is that um, people don't necessarily want to turn on auto sync of their child applications. Uh, but on the other hand, when they use App of ha Apps, they have the trouble of just that initial bootstrapping of it, they have to go click sync on all of the child apps at least the first time um, during during bootstrap, and so um, so there's a, a huge request that like can is there a way that we can initially sync uh, the application when it gets created, but then not have to rely on auto sync, and so this 
Uh, so I think a, a field to support that would be um, useful. Um, and in terms, if you were to delete an application set, the, um, the default behavior will to cascade down and delete the application, which in turn would also delete the um, application resources in the managed clusters. Um, you, if you did a non, there, there will be a way, uh, if you did just did a non-cascaded delete, uh, you can delete the set without the, the child application. So then those child applications would become orphaned, um, but they would still just be regular Argo CD applications, um, just not managed by an uh, application set. Um, so this, this project is currently in, in, uh, proposed to be actually a separate uh, controller and um, project, uh, at least initially, uh, because we know that this spec is probably going to change um, based on uh, after people get their hands on it. And like, and so we want to iterate on this fast. So it will be um, at least done as a separate project um, with the ultimate goal of the application set being a first class uh, part of the Argo CD core. And then once that's there, then we would start, um, you know, building the UI elements to support that, um, or, or any other kind of uh, first-class features for application sets in Argo CD. Um, but okay, yeah. So I wanted to stop to leave time for uh, questions and discussions. But um, please feel free to go over this doc. I believe everyone should have comment permission. If you can't comment on it, um, let us know. I, I haven't seen any comments since yesterday, so it makes me think that um, people don't have comment access on this. All right, I'll stop for questions. Uh, just a quick one on the comments. I, I think it is shut down now. Like I was able to comment previously and now all the comments have disappeared. I don't think I can add any more. Um, oh yeah, so I resolved some of the um, comments. So if there's there's definitely a way to look at comments that have been resolved. And so I actually responded, I incorporated the feedback into the um, proposal. And then and then click resolve on that comment. And so um, yeah, I I actually think it seems I can't find any way to comment anymore. It seems like it's something changed. Okay, maybe we can try to resolve oh, that offline. I just yeah. reloaded. It looks okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, it looks good now. Um, I just wanted to say we're super excited about that. It looks really good. Um, I did want to discuss at some point the naming. Um, in terms of length limits, but we should probably do that offline. But mm. uh, if there's any any Slack questions, um, I have a question or discussion, or I'm not sure. So it's from what I understand right now, this is going to uh, create an application. So from application set, you will have multiple applications. Is it going to be to create application CRDs or will it be? Will it install? Yeah, it will, it will create um, the custom resource. So um, the, an application set will, as, uh, it will be an owner in, of, of multiple Argo CD application custom resources. So I will have an application in Argo CD that will have application sets? No. Uh, well, I guess um, if you, I, I think if you're thinking of like, okay, I want to de deploy application sets to the cluster, I guess in that sense, yes. So the, the initial, um, uh, I guess you would have to create an application of application sets with then, which would then, <laughs> um, own applications, but you need that first one um, uh, to because just Argo CD, the thing that it deploys is, is called an application. Um, I, I feel like the goal is so you don't want to version control the thing because ultimately you need at some point for the first time you need to do one CTL apply 
Yeah. And I think we're just trying to make it as easy as possible. So you literally have one file, maybe you store it in Git, but once you apply it, you don't really ever change it. You just, you know. Uh, yeah, but of course. But as we manage everything in Git and we, the monorepo is very, uh, this is what we, we are looking for in the application set. We actually have multiple mol uh, monorepo. Every team has its own monorepo. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have multiple application sets and we will have, I guess, one application that manage Argo CD and all the application sets that create application for the teams. This <laughs> yeah, so what this should eliminate if, if you're using the app of app pattern, um, what this should eliminate is the, um, so you see how in this example, I would currently, in today, without this feature, I would have to have four um, application specs like in, inside Git somewhere, one for workflows, Prometheus offers service, in addition to just the, the, the install YAML of those four things. Um, so instead of that, what application set is, it, instead of just having four, and it could be like 10, like you know, if I have 10 different uh, applications here, I would have to have 10. To replace that, you would have a single application set that would get deployed, uh, and you would no longer define application specs uh, for those 10 uh, services because the application set would discover uh, additional and uh, discover and generate additional um, uh, applications as they are just dropped inside this Git repository. Uh, so, so that's the problem. Basically, it, you shouldn't have to define uh, application uh, and spec and check that into Git with this um, Within. You, you would still have to define the application set instead, but at least that's much fewer of those than you um, would have if you were to, to declaratively, declaratively manage applications. Yeah, this also solves the, another issue that was raised in the uh, previous uh, meeting, uh, where uh, today Argo CD only looks for applications in the same name face of Argo CD that requires me as a SRE or DevOps uh, to own all the applications. And every time a developer wants a new application, I have to do something, mm -hmm. approve pull request, create application CRD. That's uh, quite the same. With this uh, option, I will have application set. It will discover automatically new folders with new applications. That's uh, very helpful. Yeah. So and I, I, and I I forgot to highlight this, but this actually is an important um, uh, problem that um, we hope to address with sets. Um, currently, because um, applicant spec PRs, they, they're actually, um, you need a high degree of trust when someone is committing a, submitting a PR that has an application spec currently, um, because it has things like, oh, what project does this app belong to? What destination cluster namespace can this go to? Um, so if you have a, a, if you separate that into your own config, like in your own business uh, config format, um, that will, uh, and a template that you control is, uh, you know, hardwiring a namespace or, or, or at least doing something else for, um, you know, project cluster namespace. It allows you to kind of make those PRs less risky because they would no longer be able to control where, for example, what project they belong to or what um, destination um, they, they actually go to. And so um, that's another goal of this PR is that um, uh, you can divorce the, the portions of this, currently the portions of the application spec from the, the PR. Yeah, we do it today. We combine projects with namespaces and uh, monorepo that uh, is the GitOps of them. Mm. And that's why we can migrate to application spec very quickly. I don't, this is not a concern for us. Mm. So we are starting to run over. So I want to make sure that we're respecting everyone's time. Um, if you guys have, we'd love for you to take a look at this proposal and we can also 
create some space for the next community meeting to continue discussing this. So please feel free to read through this doc, make any comments that you see or post in the Argo CD Slack channel. Uh, we're excited to see what we can kind of do with this. Um, with that, I know we had some discussion topics that we didn't hit this uh, community meeting. And so I think with the next community meeting we'll do, we'll start with those just to make sure that we kind of get to them from the beginning. So thank you everyone for your time and have a great uh, Wednesday. Thank you, good evening. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thanks.